Today I am building a custom trading card frame. Hey guys, how's it going? I know trading card frames already exist, however the client was looking for a giant one. Apparently he passed the real test after searching far and wide and caught them all. The Pokemon trading cards, like generation one. So, 151 of them. The main portion of the frame is going to be out of half inch thick MDF and is going to have 151 trading card pockets, roughly 1 8 inch deep, and one 11 by 17 pocket for a map of the Kanto region. If you're a fan of Pokemon, you'll know what the Kanto region is. If you're not, doesn't matter. It's a area of the game. After chatting through and finalizing the design with the client, I realized that laying out perfectly and hand routing out the 152 individual pockets was going to take a seriously long time to do manually, assuming that I laid it out perfectly the first time, and decided that this would be a perfect job for a CNC machine. You might not have noticed, but I don't have a CNC machine. So this is a slightly different project for me. It's a commission project, which in itself isn't that odd. However, this is the first project where I've subcontracted out a portion of the project. I contacted Mark over at Captive Cutting and got him to run this through his CNC, which was much faster, much more cost effective, and a lot more accurate than anything I could have done manually, and it came out perfectly. I've linked to his website in the description below if you wanted to check out his work. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get footage of the CNC doing its thing, but that that's fine. We can imagine it was just a router kind of going in circles and moving to another pocket and doing another circle and just doing that 152 times. I guess not circles, rectangles. Once I had the MDF panel back home and in my basement stain room, I gave it several cans of spray primer, black paint, and polyurethane. Too bad MDF soaks up paint like a sponge. It might have been a little bit cheaper, but it came out nice and smooth, so I think it was worth it. Between cans, I started work on the frame itself. Starting with the plexiglass, which I just cut to the size of the MDF panel using a straight edge and a circular saw to cut it to length, and then the table saw to cut it to final width. This is the first time I've worked with plexiglass, and man, I'm glad I was wearing my safety glasses because there was a lot of shrapnel getting thrown at my face. Fun. All right, so I just went inside and I grabbed the width of the MDF with the plexiglass, acrylic, whatever you want to call it. And I need a dado that is about 5 eighths of an inch, or just over 5 eighths of an inch to give myself a little bit of a little bit of, to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. So since I need 5 eighths, I want at least a quarter in front of the dado, or a quarter inch in front of the dado, and an inch behind it. So that leaves, if I cut it to two inches and I give myself 3 eighths, 5 eighths, and then one inch, Two inches of war, two inches of two inches thickness of frame will be perfect. And I have nine and five eighths thickness here, longer than I need, so I should be good to use most of this board for the whole frame. This side is already jointed based on the table saw blade mark somewhere in here. I can't see it in the screen. So I know that this side's already flat, so I'll use this side against the fence. Cut two, 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 two. Yeah. Four strips, two inches wide, and go from there. And with that eloquent explanation, I do just that. Ripping the red oak board into two inch strips and evening out all of the dimensions over at the thickness planer. Then back at the table saw, I set up the fence and rip a dado through all of the boards. Since I don't have a dado stack, I just run through the boards with the fence bumped over an eighth of an inch each pass until I get the width I needed. One of these days I'll get myself a dado stack. Router table would work too. Well, I have a router table, but I could also just use the router table to do that as well. Whatever. Perfect. Since the dado wasn't left perfectly flat on the bottom, I spent some time and cleared out the bottom with a chisel. This would have been a good job for a router plane, and I even went out to get one, but it was on back order for a few months, so chisel it is. With the dados cleared out, I break all of the corners of the frame with my mini block plane, measure and cut the frame pieces to final length. To hold the frame together, I'm using these right angle brackets in each corner. I took the time and chiseled out a recess for them to sit flush into the surface. Though, 
since these are all on the back side of the frame, I guess it really wasn't necessary. It would have been just as functional either way. With the dry assembly completed and after making sure everything fit together, I pulled it back apart and glued in some red oak to plug up the dado ends, which I then just came back later on and flushed up after the glue had dried. And then I can finally get to sanding, which I took up to 220 grit with the random orbit sander. Taking the frame pieces down to my stain room, I give all of the pieces a few coats of this classic black stain and polyurethane in one. This was my first time using it, and since I had it, I've since used it on a couple more projects since then. It seems to take a little bit longer to cure. The can says you can recoat after four hours, but this previous coat is still tacky at this point. So I would recommend leaving it to dry for at least a day between coats. But at least the stain and poly being applied in one step, the wait times to completely finish it is cut down by a significant amount. With the polyurethane drying, I head back to the shop to rip a piece of maple in half with the table saw. Blade tilted to roughly 45 degrees for the French cleat. And back in the stain room, I clamped it to the MDF panel and screwed through the face of the panel into the cleat. The screws will be covered by the cards and doing it this way effectively makes it so that the frame is only there to hold up the plexiglass since now the panel can more or less hold its own weight. With everything dried, French cleated and properly fit, it's time to assemble three quarters of the frame, slide the panel into place, throw all of the cards and poster into their pockets, deplastic the back side of the plexiglass, install the plexiglass, install the last piece of the frame, and deplastic the front side of the plexiglass. And now that I've rushed through the ending there, with that this project is done. Something I didn't account for was the static electricity buildup in the plexiglass. When I stood the frame up, some of the cards wanted to tilt toward the glass, and one or two of them wanted to visit their friends at the bottom of the frame. I mean, who doesn't want to hang out with Moltres? But still, I'm not too sure how I could have avoided that, other than making the pockets a half a percentage smaller, so that the cards were a little bit more of a friction fit, but yeah, I don't know. If you have any idea on how I could have avoided that, or can avoid it in the future, throw it down in the comments so that I can keep it in mind for the future. Other than that, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. It was a lot of work, less than it would have been without Captive Cutting's CNC work, but still a lot. And the client seems really happy with it, so even better. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to seeing them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can always follow me on Instagram at John the Shriner. I'm a lot more active over there. I'm usually doing about daily updates. So you can check me out over there. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video, and have a good one.